Preserving flowers has been an art form enjoyed by people for thousands of years and there are so many methods to prolonging that natural beauty of your flowers, but none are as elegant or as long lasting as casting your flowers in resin. I'm Carl from Glasscast and in this tutorial I'm going to show you exactly how to do just that. For the tutorial I'm going to create this simple yet beautiful rose paperweight using our resin flower starter kit, whether you want to preserve a wedding bouquet or create a large centerpiece. Following the process of this video will still get you the same perfect professional results. I'll start by preparing and drying the flowers, then positioning and securing them in the mould before measuring, mixing and pouring the resin. And finally, I'll flatten and polish the top face, leaving us with a truly stunning professional flower casting. Along the way, I'll also be throwing in loads of tips and advice that are just going to take your flower castings to the next level. So as I previously mentioned, I'm going to be using the Resin Flowers Starter Kit. And if you are just starting out, it really is the perfect package that contains all of the fundamental parts that you're going to need to complete the process. In addition, you'll just need a few household items, so an airtight container, tape, scissors, scales, and of course your chosen flower. So to prepare this rose for drying, I'm going to cut the stem about one centimetre from the base. Now when I make the cut, I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle. This just increases the surface area of the opening, effectively providing a larger channel for the moisture to be drawn out through. Your flower might also have some damaged petals like these here, and it might be tempting to remove them at this stage, but what I like to do is leave them on just while the flower is drying. I find that it provides a little bit of physical protection to the rest of the petals while it's completely submerged in those drying crystals. In the kit you get 500 gram of the crystals, which is plenty to dry several flowers. Start by partially filling the container, then place the flower stem down into the crystals. Steadily pour more crystals into the tub until the flower is completely buried. A little technique here to prevent crushing the flower, pour the crystals around, allowing the grains to fill the flower up from below. Once the flower is completely buried, simply seal the container so that it's airtight. So we'll leave this now in a warm, dry place, let the crystals do their thing, and we'll check back in on it in a few days' time. Okay, so I've left my rose to dry for five days. Now, there really isn't any set time to how long it's going to take for your flower to dry out. It really does depend on the size and the type of the flower. So we'll just open this up and see where we're at. Slowly pour out the crystals back into the bag to expose the flower head. Do take your time and be gentle here, the flower is going to be in a very delicate state. Once the flower head is exposed, carefully lift it out from the remaining crystals, turn it upside down, a few light taps on the back just to get any of those loose crystals out from inside the flower. Right, so I can tell that my rose is completely dry because the petals are crunchy like an autumn leaf. If you don't think that your flower is completely dry, just pop it back in the crystals for a few more days. One thing that you don't want to do is put fresh flowers or partially dried flowers into your project, as these will just rot inside the resin over time and that won't look very nice. So if in any doubt, just leave them to dry a little bit longer. Right, so my rose is looking great. It's fully dried out. It's retained its shape really well. Although the color has changed a little, I think it still looks beautiful. Before I move on though, now is the time to remove those damaged petals. If you do have broken petals like this, it is best to remove them, as the resin can seep inside the petal and give it a wet or transparent appearance. So at this point, what you could do to achieve that suspended flower effect is to first pour a thin layer of resin, allow that to cure, then place the flower on top of it. But after casting hundreds of flowers, I found that the simplest way to suspend them is to first secure them in position using a clamp made out of cocktail and lollipop sticks. This does two things. Firstly, it's going to cut out the time that you'd spend pouring and curing that base layer of resin. Secondly, the sticks will stop the flower from floating around in the resin, meaning it stays exactly where you want it. We'll start by taping two lollipop sticks together at both ends. Then take your cocktail stick and pierce it through the centre of the flower, being careful not to go right through the stem. Push the other end of the cocktail stick in between the two lollipop sticks. Now simply just check the positioning against the outside of the mould, then place your flower into the mould. 
Now, before I do get the goods out, if you are new to working with resin, I can't stress enough how important it is to read through the safety and technical data sheets. Regardless of what resin system you're using, knowing and understanding your epoxy and how to use it safely will always ensure that you get the best results. So let's now mix up our first batch of resin. To completely fill this cube, we're going to need a total of about 250 grams of resin. Now with glass cast 50, we could do this in two pours, but I want to reduce the risk of any heat buildup from the curing resin damaging the flour. So we're going to do this in three pours. If we account for the volume of the flour and to make life easier, we can safely round down each pour from 83 grams to 80 grams, giving us a grand total of 240 grams in the cube. And if you are working on a piece larger than I am here, I would always recommend that you don't exceed 30 millimeters with each pour. Again, just to avoid that heat buildup from the curing resin. In the kit, you get 500 grams of glass cast 50, which is more than enough to do two castings in the cube. Glass cast 50 is mixed at a ratio of 100 to 45 by weight. So for each layer, we're going to mix 55 grams of resin with 25 grams of hardener. Slowly and thoroughly mix the two parts together, making sure that you scrape the sides and bottom of the cup every so often. I always recommend mixing for three minutes. Then transfer the mix to a clean cup and mix for a further three minutes. This double potting makes sure that no unmixed resin gets into your project. Once fully mixed, just allow your pot of resin to stand for about a minute or two, just to let any bubbles rise to the top and pop. Pour the resin slowly into the mould, aiming the stream into the base of the mould and not onto the flour. A few bubbles in the resin are quite normal at this stage, and most of these will pop naturally. Due to the delicate nature of the dried flowers, I'd strongly recommend that you don't use a hairdryer or heat gun when trying to pop any bubbles. To stop any dust from getting into my project, I'll just cover it over. However, don't seal it. We want to allow some airflow. Now, we're just going to leave this to firm up before we add that second layer of resin. In this studio, which is a stable 20 degrees C, that's going to take about 12 hours. So we'll check back on this first thing in the morning. So this is the level of cure that we're looking for. The resin feels firm and is still slightly tacky. This is what we call the B stage. When we do catch the resin at this stage in the cure, the layers will cross link and that will result in less visible layer lines. So let's move on and remove these supports. Carefully remove all the supports, then mix up the second batch of resin exactly how we did for the first. So with this second layer of resin, I find that slowly pouring the resin directly into the flour helps to flood out any trapped air. But bubbles will still inevitably continue to rise out from the flour. So I'd recommend regularly checking and popping them over the next couple of hours. Whilst you are unlikely to catch every single one, doing this thoroughly can keep those air bubbles in your finished piece to a bare minimum. So exactly the same as before, we're going to leave this for about 12 hours to reach the same level of cure. Okay, so we are now onto that final layer. I've got my resin pre-mixed exactly the same way as I did in the previous layers. So let's crack on and pour away. Again, I'll pour this slowly and directly into the flour to help flood out any of the trapped air. We'll top them all right to the top and then cover it over. We'll simply leave this now to reach a full cure, which should take around 48 hours. Also, over the next couple of hours, I'll nip back occasionally just on bubble watch. So my casting should now be fully cured, but before I move on to demolding it, let's just double check. It should be rock solid, and if I press firmly with a mixing stick, I should not be able to make a mark. Okay, so let's get our casting out. Do be careful, it can be quite tricky to remove from the mold. There's also this sharp meniscus, that's the bit where the resin retention has curved up the inside of the mold, hence why I'm wearing gloves. Break the airlock by prising the mould walls away from the casting. Turn it over and a firm press on the base should separate the casting from the mould, allowing you to easily slide the piece out. And so there we go, there it is straight out of the mould. 
I absolutely love this bit, seeing it for the first time and it looks incredible. We just need to address this top face here, so we're going to flat and polish the top to get rid of this meniscus. The kit has everything that you need to do that, so we've got all the sandpapers and your polishing compound. So let's get on with it and flat the top face. Starting off with the 120 grit, we'll wrap the paper around a flat block. This will ensure that we keep our surface flat. Sand in one direction until the whole surface is equally abraded. Then take the 240 grit, but this time rotate the piece 90 degrees and sand in the opposing direction. Keep sanding until you've removed all the scratches from the 120 grit. We're going to repeat this sanding in alternate directions for each grit right the way up to 1200, making sure you remove the scratches from the previous grit before moving on to the next. Now for that final polish. I'm not going to lie here, this stage does require some elbow grease and polishing to a high gloss always takes longer than you'd think. If you do have a polishing machine, you will certainly save some time and effort here. And we do have a video dedicated specifically to polishing epoxy, so that might be worth watching. But getting that high gloss finish by hand on a small piece like this is perfectly possible. The method is to firmly work the compound into the resin in a circular motion until the compound has completely diminished. Wipe away any residue and repeat a few more times. After a few rounds of firm, fast polishing with the NW1, you should have restored that high gloss finish. And so here it is. Just look at this. It's absolutely incredible. The mould has given us a smooth surface all around and this top face is like a sheet of glass. As I said earlier, this whole process will work whether you're casting a large wedding bouquet, making a centerpiece, or even making some floral jewellery. If you want to give flower casting a go exactly how I've done in this video, our resin flower starter kit is perfect and available to buy at glasscastresin.com. It's always a joy to see your creation, so do please submit pictures to our customer gallery on the website. If you've enjoyed this video, chuck us a like, and if you've loved it, why not a sub? That way you can stay up to date with great resin tutorials as we release them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.